The Execution of Mary Queen of Scots Mary Queen of Scots ascended to the throne of France as a child. She was born in France and was raised in France and was eventually married, giving her claim to be queen of the French throne. Her father was the King of Scotland. So when Mary's husband died, when she was 16, Mary had to move to the Kingdom of Scotland that her father had bequeathed to her due to her being a woman and her husband being dead, Mary had no place in courts and also had no place in ruling France. There was much scandal and opposition to Mary and a conspiracy around her plotting her husband's death caused her to lose her kingdom. Her rival and cousin, Queen Elizabeth I, gave her refuge in England, though the refuge was in the form of an imprisonment. Still considered royal blood, Mary had many privileges during her imprisonment. She was able to have 16 household staff, 30 carts to carry her belongings from place to place, decorated personal chambers, a choice in over 32 cooked meals, supervised outside time, and was allowed to continue her hobby of embroidering. However, Mary became lame after years of imprisonment, likely due to lack of exercise. Mary was also involved in many, many, many plots. Plots to kill her husband, plots to marry, plots to leave Scotland, plots to overthrow Queen Elizabeth, plots with the Catholic supporters, and plots to put her son on the throne. This messy political lifestyle is what caused her to be deemed a threat in England. The idea of Catholics putting Mary on the throne was not too far-fetched of an idea, so her fate was then sealed. Some other countries or places or people that she would have made plots with would have been the Pope of Rome, Spain, Austria, some people in Scotland, and a lot of Catholics. Almost two decades of imprisonment Plotting and overall failure was taking its toll on the health of Mary. In 1586, Mary was officially arrested after another failed plot to put Mary on the English throne had failed. You almost feel pity for her. England wasn't very kind to her, and they wouldn't help her get her throne back. And she was a prisoner, after all. Elizabeth delayed and hesitated to sign the death warrant, but it was signed, no matter how innocent Elizabeth tried to act. Now, Mary had some good retorts. She denied the charges and reminded the council that all of Europe would see this trial and England would have to suffer the consequences of executing royal blood. Mary claimed that she was denied evidence review, was denied legal counsel, and most importantly, she was a foreign and anointed queen. She was never England's subject, so she couldn't have committed treason. But all of this fell on deaf ears. Elizabeth feared that if she allowed the execution of a royal, God would judge her, and other countries might be angry at the act as well. So Elizabeth would leave vague instructions about what to do with Mary, how to handle Mary, and what to do with the case. Somehow her warrant was signed, and the Privy Council took action to cease the threat that Mary Queen of Scots was. Sovereigns are anointed by God, and to kill a sovereign is to defy God's will. Also. Mary and Elizabeth were cousins. How would the other kingdoms feel about someone who executes their own family, let alone a sovereign one? Mary had a son, James, who was already grown at the time and ruling Scotland. Elizabeth feared that revenge could come back via James or God. Now, Mary was a serious threat to Elizabeth. Protestantism was fairly new to England, so many would do anything to put a Catholic back on the English throne. Most countries at the time in Europe were Catholic and all answered to the Pope. The Pope told Catholics assassinating Elizabeth would be God's work. And this is a time where the word of God or the word of Pope would have been taken very serious. It also didn't help that Mary was the closest successor Elizabeth had due to her not bearing any children of her own. If Elizabeth did die, her heir would walk from jail straight to the throne. As mentioned prior, many, many plots over the course of two decades would have put uh, Elizabeth and the Privy Council on edge the entire time. If Mary goes, Elizabeth's rule will be made secure. This was indeed a tough decision. So the Privy Council became her scapegoat and called upon the warrant themselves. Mary was found guilty and sentenced to death. 
In 1587, Mary was found guilty and sentenced to death. Mary was told the night before of her execution, so she spent the rest of the night distributing her belongings to her staff and spent her final hours in prayer. When it came time for the execution, the executioner asked the condemned for forgiveness, as was custom. Mary replied, I forgive you with all my heart. I hope you shall make an end to my troubles. Her servants helped derobe her, revealing a red petticoat. This was to symbolize her becoming a martyr for the Catholic faith. Mary laid her head on the block and uttered, Into thy hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit. Mary uttered her last line. Then the executioner hacked once into her neck, only severing her spine. The second hack cut through the organs in her neck. And finally, the last cut through the tendrils holding her head to her body, like using a knife to cut the fat from a piece of meat. The executioner grabbed her head by the hair, lifted it up, and said, God save the queen. Unknown to the executioner, Mary was bald and was wearing a wig, so her head fell and rolled into the crowd. Once an uproar began, a lapdog came running out from underneath Mary's dress. Elizabeth was very upset about Mary's death. Her fears were correct, did have many conflicts with Catholics and God himself. Mary did, however, have the last laugh because her son became King James I of England and Scotland, uniting the two nations. I greatly appreciate you sitting through my video, my first video, my first video about history. I really do appreciate it. Please let me know anything I missed down in the comments, anything you liked, anything you wanted to know, any questions. Please leave a like, subscribe, I'll have more things coming soon. Until next time.